Hello, and thank you for joining me again, the Word Works Ministries. Um, if you are enjoying this ministry, then right below is a red button. Well, the word subscribe is in red. And if you click on that, um, every time I post, then you'll get a notification of it. But again, welcome and thank you for joining me once again. Um, today we're going to talk to the fathers. I have a couple of things to say to the ladies, but we're mostly going to talk to the fathers. Pray with me, if you will. Father, thank you for your word. Now, Lord God, I decrease and you increase. I pray for your people, Lord, to have ears to hear. I pray for those that are sick and shut in, God. I pray, God, your will will be done in their lives, God. Get the glory, Lord God, from their healing, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord. God, I pray for fathers everywhere, Lord, that they will step up and be the man that you would have them to be, God. And they will do as your words say do, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. Not only the fathers, God, but husbands everywhere, God. That they will be the husbands that you calling them to be in this day and hour, Lord. God, let the man take back his rightful place in society. In Jesus' name we do pray, God. And cover us in the blood, Lord. Amen. Thank you, God. Um, I heard Dr. Tony Evans this morning talking about how women have taken on different roles that that we're not supposed to take on that this is not designed for us and in, in in and in doing so we've we overwork ourselves we do too much and we burn out but somebody has to do it men have taken down they don't hold their rightful place anymore. So today's message is, fathers, we need you. The very first day that I started working on this message, I went into a place and I saw something that was very heartwarming. I'll get to that. But I want to say first to the fathers, don't be so busy climbing the corporate ladder that you forget your family. Don't be so busy working for your family that you forget your family. It is so important for you to spend quality time with your family. And I and take note that I did not say it is so important for you to spend time with your family. I did not say that. I said it is so important for you to spend quality time with your family, with your children and your family, your wife too, but that's another message that I have. Anyway, um, in other words, turn off that cell phone. I didn't say put it on silent. I didn't say put it on vibrate. I said turn it off. Some of you don't even know what the power button is on your cell phone. You turned it on. The, the, the people at, at Verizon turned it on for you and you haven't turned it off since. It's been glued to your hand and your eyes. Turn it off. And like I was saying, the first day that I started working on this message, I went to one of the local restaurants here and as I got, as I was standing there in line, I noticed a young, uh, a man with this young boy sitting at the table. And that man was actually looking that child in the eyes as that child talked. It was a father and son. I could gather it was a father and son from the conversation. And also from the conversation, I could gather that they didn't live in the same household and it just it was just so heartwarming to me i was like you know it really does exist it is so rare nowadays to see a father take up time with his children and what i mean quality time i'm talking about i didn't even see a cell phone now he may have had it on his hip he may have 
just putting it put it down when I walked in there. But I'm telling you what I saw. The man did not have a cell phone in his hand. He was looking at his child. He was paying attention to what his child was saying. He heard what his child was saying. That's what I'm asking you fathers to do. Fathers, we need you. I want to ask you a question now. What is the first sound that a baby makes when they start to utter little sounds? What do you think the first sound is or that we say their first words are? Now, I'm going to tell you this. The mother is the one that's d there. The mother's the one getting up at night, making the milk bottles, feeding the child, changing the diapers, um, going to work, providing the food and the shelter. But what's the first word out of their mouth? Dada. Kidding me. You're kidding me. Dada. And where is he? Nowhere to be found. You know why the first words out of their mouth is dada? Look at Proverbs 17 and 6. Proverbs 17 and 6 says, Children's children, that would be your grandchild, are the crown of old men. So your grand the grandchild is the crown of the old men and I do see that in my grandchild his papa can make him laugh I'm talking about from deep within and I can do this exact same thing and he'll look at me and say Haha. <laughs> so anyway but this is the part that I want to get to and the glory of children are their father's you are their glory, man. I didn't say it. The Bible said it. I don't want you to take my word for him. I want you to look in Proverbs chapter 17 at verse 6 and read it for yourself. Now, ladies, we have a role to play in this too. Some of you. Now, now, don't get upset with me, ladies, because I'm saying some, not all, but some of you are doing your child an injustice by keeping them away from the fathers. There are, there are extenuating circumstances where I would not recommend that the father is in the child's life. I want to make that clear. But those other cases where you're just being mean, where you just where you're using the child against the man, you are doing that child an injustice. I know a case where the lady did that, and to this moment, to right to this day, that child has a hard time functioning in society. That child has no idea how to control money. That eight they. they the child just does not know how to operate in society. And that child has made a mess of his life doing what actually he thought was right. But he had no guidance. His father was not there to guide him. And it was not because his father didn't want to be there. It's because mother didn't let him be there. Fathers, you are to teach your children the values and the ways of the Lord. Don't take my word for it. Look at Ephesians 6 and 4. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And he didn't say nothing about mama taking them to church, to Sunday school, or anywhere else. It says fathers. Look at it for yourself. Ephesians, Ephesians 6 and 4. Fathers. Bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Fathers take them to Sunday school and church. Fathers teach them the word of God. 
like I said, it has to be done, and women have taken on that role. But ladies, we're out of place when we do that. That's why the struggle is so hard. But it has to be done. And God bless you for doing that. Fathers, you, we need you to be an example to the children. Children learn what they live. And another thing. Stop buying stuff to make up for your absence. Be there. And when I say be there, I mean actually be there in body and in mind. Be there. You say she won't let me see the kids. Got an idea for you. Take her to court. <laughs> Did she hesitate to take you to court and get child support? Isn't your check garnished because she took you to court? Okay, take her to court. I, um, I, my father didn't spend quality time with me. And I know some of you that know me and maybe listening to this is going to say, I used to see you riding that truck with your daddy. You saw my daddy taking me from home to dropping me off at my aunt's house while he went and did his thing. That was not spending quality time with me. Now, this one thing I got to tell you about my daddy, and you men take note, you fathers take note, I didn't do without. I did not do without. He provided a roof, food. I even got a car when I turned 16. What? <laughs> but uh, as far as spending that one-on-one -on -one quality time with me and telling me the things that I needed to know and dating me, father, date your children. You take her out on a date and show her how she's supposed to be treated. You don't, that rascal that come up there blowing his horn at your house, she don't go out with him that night. He needs to get out of the car and ring the doorbell and his britches need to be around his waist with a belt on too. But anyway, as I was saying, my father didn't spend that quality time with me. My father didn't teach me those things. As a, and as a result, I went looking for love in all the wrong places. There's one thing about it. There's a longing in you. First and foremost, for God. And people try to fill it with alcohol and drugs and stuff. You, and you're really not realizing what you're doing. But that's another subject. But there's a way that a father is supposed to treat his children that, he, that that child will get strength from him. That child will be complete. That child needs a mother and a father. The child gets certain things from the mother, and the child gets certain things from the father. Then that child is complete. So, fathers, we need you. Fathers, we need you for correction. We need you to make the corrections, I mean, to, to correct the child. Um, mothers have taken on that role of, of chastising the children. Fathers, you do it. There should be a respect for you, for, you, for the both of you, actually, for the parents. People don't, kids don't respect us nowadays like, like we did, our parents. If our parents told us to do something, it wasn't no counting to three. And it wasn't, when they told you to do something, you got up and did it. You know why? Because it was a tall sugar cane switch over there in the corner that he did not mind using. And what man would do, he was like, all right, I'm putting that on the shelf. He would let it build up. <laughs> He'd be like, go on with me now. <laughs> he would be letting it build up. I, um, 
I want to give you two examples of two totally different fathers. Look at Job. Oh yeah, on the part about the correction. I have a scripture for you. Um, on fathers correcting the children. Proverbs 3 and 12. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth. Even as a father, the son in whom he delighteth. Delight, if you delight in your child, you correct your child. But as I as I said, I was I'm gonna I'm going to show you two examples of two different fathers. The first father we're gonna look at is the good father. Job chapter one and verse five. Job was a good father. It says, and it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them. This is talking about his kids because in the verses before that it's talking about, you know, his sons having a feast in their house. Uh, and sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. So Job got up every morning and offered sacrifice. He prayed for his kids every morning. And it says that he did this continually. This was just not something he did one or two times. Or, oh, when I, oh, let me, oh, yeah. It's been a while since I prayed for the kids. No, he prayed for his kids every day. Father, pray for your children. We need you. The other father is the bad father. That would be old Eli in 1 Samuel 3, and we want to look at verse 13. Um, it says, For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knoweth, because his sons made themselves vile, and he restrained them not. Um, Eli's children, just to put it, paraphrase it into modern time, were bad. And Eli didn't do anything about it. So God's judgment fell on Eli because he didn't do his job. Eli was a bad father. Job was a good father. Fathers, we need you. Where are you? Pattern yourself after Job. Okay, that's all I have for you today other than the question for the week. The question for the week is, how did Abraham feel about Sarah's request to cast out his son and the bondwoman? How did Abraham feel about Sarah's request to cast out his son and the bondwoman? Send me your answers to the Word Works Ministries at yahoo.com. Or write to me at P.O. Box 2243, Ozark, Alabama, 36361. And guess what? God loves you.